Joining us now in studio is Baroness Elizabeth Barrage, a member of Britain's House of Lords and member of the International Panel of Parliamentarians for Freedom of Religion or Belief. Baroness Barrage, welcome. You Thank have you. spent the day on Capitol Hill. Tell us yes. why you are here and what you hope to accomplish. Yes, uh, when the Pope visited America back in September 2015, he said it was imperative that people of different religions work together to speak up for the dignity and respect of others. So as legislators, that's what the International Panel of Parliamentarians is trying to do, to stand up for freedom of religion or belief uh, by equipping parliamentarians in different countries. So I went to visit uh, uh, Representative Chris Smith on the Hill today to speak to him about being involved in this network that can speak up in a more collaborative way and help colleagues in countries where their freedom of religion or belief is under threat and often, often under threat with their life being on the line. So we want to work together. And I had a really good reception from people today and we also met the uh, co-chairs of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission. So we're hoping to work together as a group. So lawmakers, American lawmakers, U.S. congressmen can join this organization? You're part yeah, it's a network. So mm -hmm. when we write letters to heads of state or people wanting, for instance, uh, particular pastors in Sudan who might be in prison or the Turkish pastors who was raised with uh, the President Trump yesterday when he met Erdogan, uh, the American pastor who's in prison. So we would work collectively just uh, writing this, uh, similar letters, but at similar times to try and maximize the pressure that we as a network of legislators can put on. So it sounds like you're getting a pretty positive response by those who you talk with today. What kind of response do you get from international lawmakers? Yes, I mean, we, we get quite a good response uh, in some countries, and we are trying to spread the network. We've had a really good response, for instance, in the Asian, uh, in the ASEAN region, and that's an important place for us to work, but also always to base our work in the regional context. So we're really trying to capacity build parliamentarians in their local context to deal with the problems that are on their own doorstep. The United Kingdom grants asylum to victims of religious persecution, but you said you'd like it to be more inclusive. Uh, how, how does that happen? How, how can it be more inclusive? Uh, the UK parliamentary group that I, I work with has been doing two things. Number one is to try and ensure that our Home Office, who process these claims, have staff who are sufficiently religiously literate in order to assess whether someone is making up that they have, for instance, converted to Christianity and need asylum, and also, though, that the genuine claims are accepted. The second point we've been raising, though, is that under the last parliament, we had a Syrian Vulnerable People's Resettlement Scheme. But unfortunately, we had no comparison for the Iraqis. So the religious minorities in Iraq, which include many Christians and the Yazidis, meant that they were not part of a scheme where, from the region, they could be granted asylum and come to the UK. Aside from all of the red tape, how welcoming in general is the British public to these victims? When there is a human face to victims, people are incredibly welcoming. And one of the main uh, institutions that ensures that they are welcomed is, of course, the church. Uh, but we do have to deal with the political dy dynamics that do affect people's views when they're sort of looking at just statistics mm -hmm. rather than a human face. But the UK has a long history of being, of being welcoming to people who are fleeing persecution. Absolutely. Baroness Elizabeth Barrage, a member of Britain's House of Lords, thanks so much for joining us. A pleasure. Thank you.